Speaking of conspiracies, I think it's high time we talk about one of the biggest ones ever. I'm anxious. You all know about the JFK assassination, right? Absolutely. Do you know that it was a complete conspiracy? No, I didn't actually. So what? Oh. Is he still alive? Oh, let's get into it. Maybe he's hanging out with Elvis and Tupac. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this is the first time I've heard about it. I JFK know. JFK getting shot? No, no. About the conspiracy. <laughs> oh. I, I didn't ever think that there was a conspiracy surrounding There's it. There's actually a lot, and it's because there is a lot of evidence, like actual hard evidence there's, to lend to the conspiracy. There's mm-hmm. more evidence disproving the conclusion than there is that proves yes, the conclusion. Exactly. So we're going to get into it. So, okay. Go, what, go ahead. I was just questions. going to say getting into it um, just to, cause I don't know like facts, facts. Uh, if you want to get into the actual assassination first, as far as the, the true story, I got you, bud. Okay. I got one of my favorite things when talking about conspiracies. And Your that's timeline. a timeline. <laughs> yeah. I love the timelines. I like it. I like time. I like lines. It's a great combination. Right. Not those kind of lines, Amber Heard. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Jeez Louise. Well, Put I your Kleenex can... away. Why not? <laughs> so I'm going to get in. I'm going to share the timeline. Okay. So please hold your questions till after. Oh, we learned our lesson. <laughs> The timeline will give us exactly what we're going to talk about. And then we'll kind of go through the different rabbit holes and avenues that lend to, you know, the disproving of the uh, accepted theory. I'm ready for my mind to be blown. Like Chief. I like blown. Wow. We haven't even started yet. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) Ah, And that's how we're getting into it. I bit my tongue. I bit it. I I was like, nope, nope. That's too dark. That's too dark. So let me take you down. I left your wife to pick up the pieces. (laughs) Let me take you down the trail. (laughs) It just clicked. It just clicked. This is over with. Oh, come on. He's not going to do that. Um, All right, guys. Let me me take you. Let me me take you back. Yeah. I'm going to take you way back. We're going back to 1963. Okay. It's November 22nd. It's a nice, like, sunny day in Dallas, Texas. That's one people ago. That's one people ago, for real. Yeah. That's like, that's, that's, that's such a funny that's our parents' timeline. Yeah. Right? Far away, but also kind of close. It's a nice, it's a beautiful day. It's sun shining. People are lined up on the Elm Street. They're waiting to see the motorcade that is JFK, his wife, the uh, current governor of Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, his name, who escapes me now. Do you remember it? Governor. John B. Conley Jr. <laughs> That's, That's what it is. <laughs> Don't ask me names. I'm going to have you help me out with names here. Okay, so so you got the motorcade. It's a nice open, you know, open top limousine. It's, it's a convertible. Everyone's out. It's happy. You got Jackie O and you got JFK sitting in the back. Then in the front, you have the Secret Service member driving the car. You've got the governor, John B. Conley Jr. Just, you know, cruising, cruising through. Too. Yeah, his wife was in there, too. It was a pretty big car. The governor's car? It was a limo. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. They're cruising through the streets of Dallas, okay? They take a turn onto um, Elm Street. Just a little bit after they turn that, sh- turn that street, one gunshot goes off. Nobody really notices. It sounds like a car backfiring. People are like, all right. Seconds later, another gunshot goes off. You see John F. Kennedy grab his throat, and then a few seconds later... You see his head take the uh, final and fatal shot, which was technically the second shot. And third? sorry, that was the third That's shot. Third shot. Was like, sorry, uh, the, the, the second shot was the one that hit him in the neck. No, the first shot hit him in the neck. Second shot missed. Third no, no, shot. No. You said there was we'll one get shot. Into that. You said there was one shot. <laughs> yep, there was a gunshot. That nobody heard. Then he got hit in the neck and then he got shot in the head, okay. which also hit the governor in the back, and we'll we'll go into we'll that. We'll talk about that. We'll go too. into the details of that also. Well, all of this happened really quickly. Um, this was all filmed also on what has come to be known as the Zapruder film. So mm-hmm. the guy who was filming all this, just just a normal bystander filming everything that happened. That video is easily found on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Watched it quite a few times today. 
Mm. Pretty gruesome. Just it's a warning. Um, that video is probably the most famous video because that's how they dissected and kind of went through everything, right? So John, he gets shot. He's dead. Com- just completely dead. The governor survived, even though he had some extensive injuries. Mm-hmm. Essentially, the bullet went through his back, came out under his right nipple, went into his right hand, Jeez. came out and ended in his left leg. Okay. That's going to be important here oh, very crap. soon. Oh, yeah. The shot. <laughs> is it a magic bullet? The shot. <laughs> was his. Wait, hold up. Was his leg like up on a thing? Timeline. Just okay, a minute. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was. It's from the movie Wanted. So they curved the bullet. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the shot that ended up killing uh, John F. Kennedy came from the Texas School Book Depository building, which was an eight story building at the back side of the street. So it was behind them and where they were driving. Pause real quick. Are you doing the Warren Commission's report? Is this is this what you? Well, we'll get to that. Yeah. Is that the what this is though? Right? Well, that'll that'll be there. Okay. Essentially, yes. Yes, okay. it is. Um, so through their investigation, they found Lee Harvey Oswald was the one who they claim shot and killed John F. Kennedy. He was up in the window of that the six story window of that building. They found his gun left h- hidden there behind some boxes. They found the three casings from the three bullets that were shot. They arrested him. Before he was arrested, he actually shot a, a police officer. So he killed somebody Dang. not too long after, you know, killing the president. Um, after this all went down, he got arrested. Two days later, Lee Harvey Oswald is being taken out of the Dallas Police Department on live television, being transported to a different prison. A man named Jack Ruby jumps out of the crowd, shoots him in the stomach, kills Lee Harvey Oswald right then and there. He gets arrested, obviously goes to jail. Then one week later, after all of this, Lyndon B. Johnson, then vice president, now sworn in as president of the United States, creates the Warren Commission named after its leader, Earl Warren, who was a Supreme Court justice at the time. This commission is filled with other reputable political men. Mm-hmm. They start to investigate everything that went on with, with the assassination and everything. Their conclusion, which is the widely kind of accepted one, is that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. He was essentially a, a, a madman, an extremist. He had ties to Russia. He had tried to defect to Russia. Like No, he did defect to Russia. He tried to. He couldn't renounce his U.S. citizenship. Okay. I thought he spent a couple of years there. So No, he did, but he, he couldn't like, there was, yeah, he didn't like fully renounce his okay. American citizenship. Right. So, so they pick him as the shooter. They found the gun. The gun was owned by him. Um, he had a past of, he, he showed some violence as a kid. He chased his like half brother around with a knife. He was, he was in the Marines where he became a sharp, a sharpshooter and well-trained in the M1 rifle. Um, he defected and, and left to Russia for a long time. Uh, is the M1 he, he rifle tried what to, he used to shoot? It no. is not, oh, okay. but it's it's similar. Okay. He lit, he was a Dallas resident at the time, had previously actually tried to kill another like kind of leader and missed and, and didn't kill that person. But, you know, he succeeded in this in this event, which is one of the most infamous um, assassinations in our in our country. Considering there were three before it, three, four presidents in total have been assassinated in the U.S. But yes, at the end of the day, the Warren Commission's like, Lee Harvey Oswald did it. We got him red-handed. Um, he acted alone. That's it. That's the end of this. Well, that I do not believe is the case. Neither I do don't I. believe Agreed. that he acted alone. I mean, I don't know. That seems like a pretty cold cut shape case there. <laughs> Just wait. Okay. That's Ex- too cold cut. Exactly. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of things. Once people's kind of dove down into it, there's a lot of evidence that shows, like like Chris stated earlier, more evidence disproving it than can prove it. And they even uh, a news studio took a poll, like in thing like back in 2003, and to this day, like. 70. Like 70% of people still believe <coughs> that Lee Harvey Oswald did not act alone. Yep. 70%? Uh-huh. Right. Mm-hmm. Holy Americans crap. Do not believe that he acted by himself. Like Lee Harvey Oswald said, he was just a patsy. Exactly. He did say that, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And 
it, yeah, there's just so there's so much. It's too convenient. Honestly, for me, looking at Lee Harvey Oswald and his past, I'm like, this is just too perfect. Right. You like, know, this too kinda, perfect to make him a patsy. This kind of reminds me of just so far is Jack Reacher. Mm -hmm. With Tom Cruise, how they immediately think it's this one guy because he's ex-military. They had his thumbprint on the quarter, his rifle, blah, blah, blah. And anyway, yeah. Exactly. It was inspired by that. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Right. Maybe. Exactly. So, I mean, now now let's start let's start jumping into some of these details. Okay. Yeah. You, you have the basic story, right? Have you have any of you seen the Zapruder film? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, where he, they're riding down on the car, and mm -hmm. I actually yeah. haven't. It's it's wild. So we're gonna disprove this right now. I mean, <laughs> let's. I'm saying let's let's jump into how to disprove this exactly. Kay. Like he could not have Chris acted alone. Antsy. No, go ahead. Tell me what you got. Okay, I will say one thing mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the film. The exit wound is clearly the back of the head. Yes, of John F. Kennedy. Clearly. Yes. Okay. Where Oswald was supposed to have shot JFK was behind him. Mm -hmm. yep. So it was supposed to go through the back and come out the front. Correct. See, and it's funny because without seeing the film, I want to say I've heard that before. And so when you were telling the story and that they were at the back, I was like, wait, what? But right. Anyway. So the grassy knoll is the... The obvious mm -hmm. conspiracy. You've, all, mm -hmm. have you, you've heard that phrase before, I've right? the phrase. Right. People the shooters use it in, in the grassy knoll. In other like conspiracies. What, like, what is it? Sorry. So so on this path, right, he's going down Elm Street, supposedly, well, he was, Lee Harvey Oswald was in the building six stories up behind them, like almost so it's directly kind of, behind the yeah, street. It's, it's, the right. road is kind of like an S turn. Mm -hmm. So you're coming down that kind of S turns, and then when he curves, there's a, a book depository that's directly right behind him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then as you're coming around the S curve, you've got a grassy knoll here on the side. Kind with of in a, front of them. In front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. with the railroad station like behind corner. it and a wooden fence and stuff. And the viaduct. Yeah, Essentially the viaduct. Essentially a pretty, a pretty good, a really good spot to get a good sight on any car moving down that street. Out of 100 plus witnesses, two thirds of them said they heard shots fired from the direction of the grassy knoll. Mm -hmm. Yes. Two thirds. Wow. Exactly. So... So one of the biggest things is that the, the claim that there were only three shots fired. Correct. Okay. Fast forward to like, you know, more, more recent technology, better stuff through analyzing the sound from the Zapruder film, the, these, these audio engineers or whatever deduced that there potentially were six gunshots. Jeez. Really? In this video. And this is something that came out like much recent years, yeah. like after the two thousands. But a lot of them say it was ricochet too. Like our echo or whatever you want to call it. But see they, in the, in the analyzation of the video though, that would sound different. Right. But at the same time too, there are three shots Let's not go past that. Those three shots, they were, he, was, he shot with a bolt action rifle. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Those three shots, the amount of time he got those three shots off is impossible to be that accurate, let alone even do that with that yeah. bolt action rifle. So the bullets came out I, too I think, fast. I think it was five seconds and which is possible, but the first two shots were within like 1.8 seconds or what between 1.8 and two seconds. Mm. Those two shots were fired. So there was a, and there's a movie about it, JFK. But there is a district attorney out of New Orleans who took it upon himself to kind of investigate all this stuff because mm -hmm. he had his ideal of thinking and he actually went and tested that. He went to the book depository, mm -hmm. had a rifle, the exact you know same type of rifle that Lee Harvey used, mm -hmm. and he tested it. And he, he fired on the public? No. Oh. It, was, <laughs> it was unloaded. <laughs> <laughs> he said he tested it. So you did. Yeah. The very fact that I'm guilty of murder proves to you I <laughs> <laughs> have to do it the other way. <laughs> but he, uh, <laughs> he went and tested it because how long, how, how many seconds was it again? Between that, the first and second. It was five point, it's five point something seconds yeah. for all three shots. Yeah. So but he, the first two are at question because they were within one point something and two seconds of yeah, each other. Yeah. So I, I think they, yeah, they determined it was, you know, what, yeah, the five or six seconds or whatever. He went up there and they, him and another guy sat up there for probably an hour or two 
just trying to go over and trying to beat it. And I think the fastest they could do it in was like 10 seconds. Hmm. Yeah. So it was the time between shots was 2.25 to 2.3 seconds between the first and second shot. Uh huh. And then it was a total of five point what? Yeah, that would be about five seconds. No, yeah, the first two were were quick, and then the second one was a little bit after was delayed. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, theoretically, like it could have been that Lee Harvey Oswald shot the first and the third, right? Yes, because <clears throat> there was a bigger time. So either them. way you look at it, it just proves that it was just him. In but my I, opinion, I thought you said <clears throat> that the pure fact that the exit wound was in the back of his head meant that Lee of, that Lee did not do it. That's what I yeah. So when and when well, that and the shot thing is, the they third say, shot, they say the third through their yeah. investigation, they say that the shots entered the back of his head and came out the front. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah, so they, the Warren Commission, like it, through the investigation, so, they say it came in through the back and went out the front. So, Problem is in the video and maybe and I was going to ask your, your professional uh, so opinion I was on gonna, this. I think I know where you're going. When he gets shot, his head goes back. Right. Yes. His head whips back. So now when you've shot deer or anything like that, your exit wound is bigger because all, all the energy is towards the back. And yes, it's your, all, all that energy is going towards. So it's pushing, it'll push the end. So, so if he were shot in the face, he would move back. Yeah, but if it, it was shot in the back of the head, he, he would move, move forward. forward. Yeah, it it just goes yeah. against physics. Yeah, it goes against physics. And you, you clearly in the, the, head, the video, you clearly see his head whip back when he gets. Well, it hits the, the back the of final the car. Now he's riding up. on the back bench with his feet in the seat, facing the windshield. No, he's right? down in. The, he's on the seat. He's in the seat. So yeah, oh, he's he in, in the. the you're right. He's in the very back seat. Very yeah. back seat. No, I I get what Austin's saying. He's not on the back of the car. No, he's still oh, in the yeah, seat. Yeah. Oh, he's in the seat. Yeah. Okay, because that's how I pictured it too. Okay. But supposedly I they were lifted up just a little bit. The back seat is lifted up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so okay, it's, it's higher so people can see him better. Right. But they're not like on top of the back of the car like you see a lot of people do, like mm-hmm. a parade style. Exactly. Okay, got it. Yeah. So real quick, I I do want to get into the uh, the the magic bullet, but first I want to share a couple interesting facts about the setup. Before this all happened. So, um, Lee Harvey Oswald, like we talked about, he, he was trying to defect from the U S to Russia, Mm -hmm. had a violent past, had all that stuff like perfect, perfect Patsy, honestly. Right. Um, so that's always something to remember when, when they were about to, to come to town to do this, like drive through, they sent ahead two secret service agents who basically like, you know, checked out the route. Okay. So first of all, the route was, was very criticized and then it had a lot of turns. A lot of turns requires you to slow down a lot more. Mm-hmm. So well, a we'll, much slower moving target. Can I add something to that? Mm-hmm. So with the turn, there was a 120 degree turn. This, the secret service, it's against all protocols to go past a 90 degree turn. And there was one that was 120, which is well past. You have to go real protocol. slow. Right. Down, they said down to like 11 miles per hour just to make that turn. Mm-hmm. Right. Wow. So real slow. Sorry, so, I just so, want to add that in there. No, so exactly. You're right. Like, well, the the route was kind of weird. There were a lot of turns. It wasn't as safe. These these uh, are these Secret Service agents are reported to have said there were more than twenty thousand um windows that looked down onto Holy this cow. path. Twenty thousand windows. They didn't have the manpower to investigate them. So you know what they did? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they literally did not investigate any of it. Wow. They're just like, all right, we'll take our it. chances. Exactly. So are they in on it? That is a conspiracy. That's where we, that's where we, we don't there. know. Now, now real quick, just because I didn't know until I looked it up, but I didn't know what a patsy meant when you guys kept saying he was a patsy. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I looked up and the definition is a person who is easily taken advantage of, especially by being cheated or blamed for something. Right. Exactly. So he's I didn't he's know the what fall meant. guy. He's yeah. the patsy. He's the one that they wanted to put all the blame on. So the investigation would be closed real quick. and right. Everyone would just move on. So quick question. Why? Why? What was going on that they would want JFK assassinated? We can get into that. Oh, we'll get oh, into that. Because yeah. there's most of the conspiracy theories are around different ideas of, okay. of why. Should we say? So we'll we'll kind of go through. Should some we of those. go through the evidence of why it's fake and then go back to mm-hmm. that and then kind of see what you think? Okay, it most aligns with. So so all the windows. Then real quick on top of that, no. Lee Harvey Oswald was employed 
at the Dallas School Book Depository. Uh-huh, right. He was an employee of the building he shot out of. Oh, correct. Man. So he had access. He could have planted the gun weeks ahead, you know, days, whatever. Um, the FBI had an open case investigating him w- w- for his known ties to Russia. Yep. Good heavens. But they failed to mention that to the Secret Service. Yep. But also, the Secret Service failed to mention their routes and what they were even doing. So, really, you have a case of, of no communication between these two very important agencies about an event that needs to be very locked down. And was it deliberate? Exactly. We don't know. Now, I'm confused. <clears throat> Lee Harvey Oswald is the guy that shot JFK, yes. right? So allegedly, allegedly, but like, so why, why would you say he would plant his own gun to condemn so, him? So because no, 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 he plant, he could have, because he had access to that building. He worked there. He could have already he had could the have gun planted there. the gun in the building. So the day that it happened, like he wouldn't that be he seen carrying anything. He could just walk in, grab the gun from where he was hiding it, shoot and, and disappear. Side note there too. They supposedly have a picture of him in his front yard holding that same gun mm-hmm. right next to him. But upon <clears> further <throat> development as well, because it was also a picture that was posted as the front cover of the Time magazine, they possibly have proof that that picture was faked. That his face was superimposed yes, on the Yes, that was body. superimposed really? over it. Yeah, either that so, or they also thought it was a Mazinagant at first. It that? wasn't an M1. Yeah, it's a rifle. It's a yeah. so the, the M1. The rifle he actually used. It's an Italian rifle. So it's a the man, the man liquor. That's the actual name. The man liquor Carcano six point five millimeter Italian right. rifle. Right. So just because I'm still a little bit confused, you're saying he could have planted the rifle and then shot from elsewhere? No, no, no. no he the, shot he from had, the building he was employed at. Yeah, yeah. they're just Therefore, saying he had he the opportunity have, to take the gun there. Two weeks prior, so plant the gun, and then go up during his shift. Yeah. So like, so that way the, the gun's there waiting for him to get up to yeah. his shooting spot. President's coming it. to town. You're going to look real inconspicuous walking around with a rifle. Yeah. Right. So he could have planted in preparation for oh, this Oh, okay. Earlier. That's what they're saying he did. Yeah. So the, well, the FBI knew that he worked at this building and, and knew he was under investigation, all this stuff. And it could have helped him essentially carry out what he did. Yeah. And the FBI is blaming the Secret Service for not telling them the route. Oh, Because okay. if they would have known the route that was taking, they would have known it was the book depository, which is where he worked. And you could have been like, hey, watch out for this guy. Yeah. He might be crazy. <clears throat> Got you. Okay. Now it's making the right. connection. So, the, and those are just some, some interesting little facts about that. One with it as well. Mm-hmm. So when this all is happening and there's gunshots, the car is actually braked at the point when they're getting shot at. As a CIA, as a special service, you, you hear a gunshot, you're supposed you're to supposed to take off. Take off. The, they didn't the, move very fast. The vehicle brakes. It brakes to the job's done. And the only <laughs> Secret Service guy. So there's a, a car behind that was following the presidency. The one Secret Service person. You see him jump on He's the, the one car. That jumps on the back. Yeah, you see him hill. Jackie. It's something hill. But mm-hmm. he was the only one who wasn't supposed to actually be there, but was special requested. So everybody else who was slacking, who did so nothing, he reacts, like, he's he's the only one who racks. But he wasn't even supposed true. to be Crazy. in the motor. What what is it? The, the motor pool. Motorcade. 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 Yeah. Call. yeah. So that's interesting. very interesting. So, yeah, so I'm lots sorry. Of weird I stuff. asked this earlier and you didn't, didn't answer it. What was the saying behind the grassy knoll? Oh, so yeah, so so because. These shots happen so quickly. Mm-hmm. There's belief that there has to be another shooter. And the grassy knoll was a perfect little hiding spot where another shooter had a great line of sight directly at JFK and at the car to where he could have taken whoever was there could have taken the actual kill shot. But you were saying that there was like a saying behind it. The grassy oh, knoll. Conspiracies. You'll hear, just listen to like TV shows, movies, whatever. Whenever somebody's kind of talking about conspiracies in some way, someone like just mentions the phrase grassy knoll because that's like the most widely accepted mm-hmm. conspiracy. Yeah. It's Got saying you. that's the conspiracy is that somebody shot from the grassy knoll okay. even though they, they denied it. Okay. Even though they said it was just awesome. Right. So that's the biggest thing is they're saying it was this one man. He was a madman. That's all it was. He killed the president because he didn't like him and he was tied to Russia. That's what they're claiming this all was. But every all the other evidence is showing, no, this was a bigger, more orchestrated 
effort to kill this president. Mm. Mm -hmm. So you supposedly have the three bullets, but then you also have, um, like there, there was another bullet that like ricocheted off the ground, hit a guy in the cheek, right? Chunk of it hit this guy in the cheek. There were multiple gunshots. As we know, there were more than just three. Um, but the magic bullet theory is probably the most ridiculous thing out of all of it. Right. This is hilarious. So they they would have you believe. This is our government, by the way. They <laughs> literally came up with this theory. Okay. They would have you believe that the the second bullet, the one that went through his, his neck. neck, went through his neck, hit the governor in front of him in the back, upper right back, exited through his below his right nipple went into his right hand like shattered his wrist Ricocheted. and then hit into his leg ricocheted and off it and then went into his leg so and the governor was basically sitting in the passenger seat if he i'm was understanding sitting in the passenger seat in front of him yes so so hit. it would have had to have gone through kennedy's neck it essentially would have had seat. to turn in the air <laughs> And be like, yeah, I want to so, go this way. Nope, this way. Okay, this way. So I went, ding, go. ding, ding. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Supposedly. It was and, magical. And I, if I remember right, they took the bullet out, and the bullet that they solid. used, that they showed and said this was the bullet that was used, was an actual solid bullet. They, they got it off his stretcher, yep. the, the governor. Yep. There was no... There's no blood on yeah, it. Yeah, no blood on it, no fragmentation to it, no crush to it, anything like that. A bullet like that, that would have ricocheted off bones or anything, for that matter, would have some dings and dents in it or what be it, fragmented. What it does is mushrooms. It was uh -huh. a solid lead bullet, yeah. but it's still, when it hits bone, it mushrooms, so the tip uh -huh. goes in and it expands, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would have mushroomed. It was just a bullet sitting there, like somebody was like... Mm. Yeah, and then they, right that's the what stretcher. they kind of think is someone carrying the stretcher and slid but, the bullet underneath But it. the funny thing, there's oh the, gosh. they're like, look, there's this little... Dent in the in the end of it right here. Mm -hmm. It's like, are you kidding me? No, no, no. Look, see, <laughs> yeah. see, there. You didn't there's see a, it before. There's right. a dent. Exactly. So yeah, so that the magic bullet theory is is preposterous. Preposterous. It's the most ridiculous right. thing. Well, this thing can just fly around. Um. So this Jim Garrison guy as well, um, with that whole thing, how he claims that there's another shooter, is so when he was up there in the book depository and he's looking over the thing. He's asking the question, you know, Lee Harvey Oswald, he wants to kill the president. Why not take the best shot you possibly can? The street coming towards the book depository is a straight shot. Mm. And there's the possibility that he misses and the Secret Service steps on the gas. He's still got another shot where they're coming straight at him. Mm -hmm. Instead, he waits for them to make the turn and to go down this way where now he doesn't have a straight shot anymore. And so he shoots... And the target's moving and away. And the target's moving away, so now it gets even more difficult to shoot. Basically, his thinking was, is what they did is they made it a turkey shoot. So they waited and waited and waited until he got into this place where it was point of no return. You've Essentially, got, it was boxed got, in. Yeah, you've got one guy up in a building. You've got another guy over here. It's an ambush point. Yeah, and it's just basically an ambush to get on him. So when they say there was multiple shooters, were they from multiple directions? Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The grassy knoll was just the best spot to get a kill shot. Well, there's actually a witness, too, who said they saw somebody. Mm -hmm. There's a yeah. truck stopped. A green truck stopped. A guy got out of the truck, grabbed a large paper sack, and it looked like a rifle in the paper sack, mm -hmm. by the way, it went down and then shot. And they thought it was just a Secret Service member going to make sure that everything was okay, like a like a scout sniper or something. Well, that's... Um, and the... Huh? Oh, continue. So the witness went to a diner and is like, the, so for being Secret Service, they're not that secret, and conveys the whole story to the diner. Well, they were going to Fort Worth. They end up getting stopped in Fort Worth because the assassination happens, and they... Uh, the diner calls the police and the authorities and told them that this witness had told this story about seeing this man come out of this truck with a paper bag mm -hmm. that you could see the outline of a rifle in that witness gets picked up, does a lineup. And this is before, um, Lee Harvey Oswald was even captured, right? They do a lineup of it and guess who they pick out as one of the people who was driving the truck. So that Jack Ruby or yep. Ruby. Yeah. They picked out. Yeah. It was Ruby. Yeah. 
Ruby's Ruby. Yes. Oh, snap. Jack Ruby's the one who killed right. Lee, Bar- Lee yes. Harvey Oswald Correct. two days later. Who yes. <sighs> killed Lee Harvey Oswald. Shoot, dog. But, what? But they don't tell you that interview. But that, that lady was interviewed like three or four times by different authorities. And her, each time it was always pushed away. Right. So same Swept thing. Conveniently. So, so he could have been the one to also kill JFK. Well, he had well, he ties. Was, he, he was a part ties. of it, and that's why essentially he killed Lee Harvey Oswald right. to shut him up. So, and he had ties to the mob. The uh-huh. other thing is too is Jack Ruby also had ties to Dallas PD. He was friends with all the cops, which is how he got underground through organized crime. Yes. Yeah. So he basically the transfer of Lee Harvey Oswald was supposed to be secret. Um, they had like one news station down there to cover it. Um, but other than that, it was supposed to be hush hush. Nobody knew about it because of, you know, of course this guy has allegedly just killed the president. So they're not going to try to let him. A very beloved president. Yes. Yeah. Well, it depends, but yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> through probable, so can I give you a probable cause for this being part of the theory yes, right sir. now? So Robert Kennedy, who's JFK's brother, mm-hmm. was the district. No, he was the, who's the one in charge of? Um, gosh, what's that position? It's a, it's a high up in the government, but he's in charge of like uh criminal, like tracking. AG? What is it? Attorney general. Attorney general. Excuse me. I couldn't think of the word, but he's the attorney general. He was cracking down on the mob with JFK appointing it. Mm-hmm. F- the guy who was uh, in charge of the FBI was J. Edgar Hoover. Right? Yes. Make sure that's right. Uh, CIA. No, FBI. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the FBI. The other guy, CIA, we'll get to him in a minute. <laughs> yeah, he was the director of the FBI from 1924 Correct. to 1972. Okay. Dur- under his watch, he had ties with the mob and was, wasn't was doing any arrests on the mob until Robert Kennedy came and started really cracking down on the mob. As soon as JFK was killed, no more arrests were being made. So the FBI, they think the FBI... And the mob were enticed as part of the assassination mm-hmm. of JFK to slow Robert Kennedy down. Yeah, and that's if you watch this JFK movie, which I highly recommend watching. Yeah, I want to watch it. Um, I just that's, saw a clip. that's one of the biggest things that they talk about. the 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 whole The whole point of this uh, this Jim Garrison is is his association. He believes that the FBI is behind this. This was all a government cover up. Really? Yes. I think there's more hands in that. Oh right. yeah. So so going on to add add a little more uh um cover up to to this whole situation. Another thing that always stood out throughout all of this and was unexplained was the umbrella man. Right. So while this happened, okay, like I said, it was a beautiful sunny day in Texas. There was one man in the crowd who had an umbrella. And he just held the umbrella until right before JFK came down the street in the car. That umbrella was open and up. And you can see him in pictures and the, in the Zapruder film, all that. And some people claim you can slightly see him as soon as, as JF Kennedy's like right in front of him, kind of lift his umbrella when the shots start to ring out. He lifts it two feet up and uh-huh. then spins it. Exactly. So the, the, the other thing that happens is, shots have just been fired so someone just died the president just died people are freaking out this guy sits down on the curb and just chills and they have a picture of him sitting down on the curb with another another gentleman just sitting there out in the open still right Mm -hmm. (laughs) like like feet away from the where the president just got shot wow where while everyone else is running away they're just sitting just chilling kind of like they weren't worried about any kind of repercussion or anything happening to them Mm mm-hmm Wow. One of the theories with that is he's the one who signaled Mm -hmm. the assault Mm -hmm. with the umbrella. Exactly. (laughs) He he also could have been like a targeting point. Like he could have helped let him know when he was lined up, when they were in the right spot. Right. But essentially, yeah. That's crazy. Just a cue. Yeah, exactly. And this guy, even like after rumors about this started to happen, people also claimed he could have had an umbrella that shot darts. Yeah. Yeah. and so he goes to, he he walks into like the police department like a week later or something like that with his umbrella, and he basically shows him like, see, this is this is nothing, and like kind of explains 
why he had the umbrella, what he was doing with it, why he was there. And he comes huh. up with this cockamamie scheme about how he was protesting um, all this stuff and whatnot. But he's like mm. this one guy with an umbrella. And he wasn't asked to come down. He he went in and offered this story and this evidence of a normal umbrella unprovoked for no reason. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, that's not... A red flag. Wasn't right. me. No, nope, it's a black <laughs> umbrella. <laughs> hey. Wasn't, wasn't me. Yeah. Is exactly. So to get to to dig a little deeper yeah. into this here conspiracy. So Jack Ruby, who now we find was po- possibly part of the team that was on the grassy knoll. I didn't even realize that. He, after shooting Lee Harvey Oswald, goes to jail. While he's in jail, he all of a sudden just goes crazy. Just goes insane, like un unintelligible, like nobody can understand him, like he's just going crazy. Well, it turns out before this happens, um, there was a gentleman, I forget his name, but there was a gentleman that that a doctor who came in seeking to work with him to possibly help him divulge information about what he might know or what his part is in all of this, like why he did it, all of this stuff, right? This doctor has direct ties to, don't forget, you remember this name? Remember the name Goatleap? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the guy who uh, led MK Ultra. Get right. out, bro. For real? Yeah, dude. This guy was one of that one of the people in that team. Right. And he was hired by Goatleap because he could, quote, make a person go insane through hypnotism without them realizing it. Oh, my gosh. So then, yep. all of a sudden... You have Jack Ruby, probably the only piece of evidence into what actually happened, go insane. Yep. And then, was two, three years later, when mm. he's possibly getting better, he up and dies in prison. Right. What? Uh-huh. What's... Now, that's not the only person, though. Apparently, there were a group of people associated with Jack Ruby, like eight, eight people who just died yep. mysteriously right. all around the, like this same time and throughout the years, all people who were looking into things having to do with the JFK assassination. So this, they got suicided. <laughs> this Jim or Garrison heart, guy, heart attacked. He goes into that a lot as well, and he actually um, claims um, that he, at one point, was followed by members of the FBI and CIA. Correct. Actually, tried to. He claims that they tried to at one point hush him up basically, because of how he was diving deep into it. So he was uh, uh, the movie. I don't know if this is how it happened in real life, but the movie portrays him. He's actually at the airport. And one of the old guys that worked with him uh, came in and he was like, hey, man, I'm sorry that I left in such a hot spell and stuff and yada, yada. And he's like, what? Why are you here? And he started getting weird. And then all of a sudden he kind of does this glance over and then he starts seeing people. And then he goes into the bathroom and then some people start like, by his door and then he starts walking all over the place and people like all these undercover guys are just following his every step and these are basically people who he believes covered up the whole jfk thing and mm-hmm. he thinks that he was being trying he was gonna he was gonna be hushed suicide guys yep Jeez, it goes even crazy. deeper than that <laughs> what even deeper give it so to us. The president who's the president before jfk eisenhower correct yep. Have you ever heard Eisenhower's final speech when he's leaving the office talking about the military industrial complex and how it's a horrible thing? No. No. You you never heard that speech? Uh -uh. You look it up after we're done here. He has a private meeting with JFK. Okay. JFK was actually in the sea, like, uh, he was in the Navy doing secure, or what is it called? Intelligence in the, in the Navy. Right. He was friends with a guy named Forrestal who became the secretary of the Navy. Basically the highest position you can get in the Navy. Correct. So he was really high up in intelligence. And this part, I went down a rabbit hole with this. You ever heard of a thing called Roswell? Yes. In Mexico? Have you, ever heard of the, have you ever heard of the battle over Los Angeles? Yes, actually. Have you? During World War II. This uh-huh. is when JFK... That's when they were shooting, like, air raid sirens going off. They were shooting at stuff, but nobody could see anything. 1,500 rounds mm-hmm. over Los Angeles 
saying that there were well, nine aircrafts coming. They shoot all these batteries over Los Angeles. Not one falls. Nobody dies. Supposedly. They're just shooting their guns off into the air, but no one knows why. So they say that there was unidentified aircraft flying, flying over Los Angeles and that there was confirmed downs. They changed it to say that it was just people being nervous because of World War II. There was also a submarine that attacked an oil field off the coast of Los Angeles. A, a rush, no, it was a Japanese sub that cost $500 worth of damage. Have no idea what happened with any of this. You remember when we talked about UFOs and there was the ship that seemed to be underwater? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All this ties to that. So he was in, into the intelligence agency and Forrestal was over it all. They say that the CIA, so that's when the CIA was formed, right? Was end of Eisenhower, right? I'll get you that fact. Keep yeah, talking. please do. So you're telling me aliens killed JFK? I'm that's saying, actually one of the theories. <laughs> that's one of the things not the aliens did, but that he was trying to find out information about UFOs. And I'm not saying it's extraterrestrial, but it could have been because he went to to Germany. Germany had so many secret weapons that we had no idea about that they were trying to form. Mm-hmm. And one of That's them crazy stuff. seemed to be a, a egg shaped the bell? craft. Right. Or, yeah. Or is it, is that no, what it's wait, the bell was the, the one they tried to use for time travel? Dude, those friggin' Germans were into some crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, They did some crazy stuff, but also anyway. the CIA was formed in 1947 under Truman Truman. Right. And then Eisenhower was worried about it because the CIA doesn't have to answer to the president. It was, is, different form so there's another majestic 12 is a group that was in head of UFO UFO intelligence and there's documents there's a guy hold on let me find his name because he had a podcast on it and I kind of went down a rabbit hole with it nope Dude, this is wild yeah and here's the thing like the JFK CIA aliens hi dude <laughs> grassy <laughs> knoll the CIA is such an easy <laughs> boogeyman to, to scapegoat anything with like, you can always just say, oh, CIA did it. And it's like, oh, well, that's the end of that. That's <laughs> true. You know? Like, and, and the thing is, is they do this crap. Like, MK Ultra. the only reason we even know it happened is because they made the mistake of not burning right. everything. Remember? They tried to cover it up. Mm-hmm. So the podcast is called Conspiracy JFK. But I anyway, like it. it's one of those things. I told you guys, I if there's a weird article, <laughs> I'll read it. <laughs> this was one of those that was like... Do you believe that aliens could have been the reason that I was like, I'm in. Let's listen to this. <laughs> Let's find out. That's fine. Yeah. So I, I. What was, what was the saying? Believe less than half of what you read and even. Right. Believe half of what you see and even well, less of what you read. Yeah. I don't have to believe it. But then I actually went to this guy's website and I can't. It's like Aurora Boris Inc. And he has documentation where JFK asked for uh, permission to see the UFO crash, crashes. Because mm-hmm. Roswell. It was said it was an unidentified object and then turned to a, a weather balloon, right? Yeah. It's always said, a weather balloon. So it was a weather balloon, and they took, anyways. Oh, it was never a weather balloon. Now, out of curiosity, because the government released, what was it, like 40 different site, UFO sightings documented? 400. Or 400. Right, yes. Does this happen to fall within one of those, like the Battle of oh, Los Angeles? Because they there were a lot of documents released, but the documents are massive. Right. And oh. nobody... Like, I'm sure there's some YouTubers and, and podcasters that are reading these documents because right. anyone can get them. Because I bet that's where they got he got some of this information yeah, from. But it's it's a lot of real? a lot of information. Come on, you internet through. sleuths gives mm-hmm. us gives us something to eat. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so there's more crafts found. So they said the one. So a farmer found the first UFO from Roswell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he waited three days to disclaim it to anybody. And then he had to cover he had to cover it up like they put pressure on him. And then on his deathbed, he said that everything he said before was a lie. Right. And the, well, as in he he claimed it wasn't a UFO because the Air Force basically put pressure on him to shut his mouth. When he died, he was like, "It was a UFO. It was aliens." Like he came clean. But like MK deathbed. Ultra, Majestic Twelve was a branch of the CIA who didn't have to answer to anybody, no matter what, and they actually had teams that would go collect UFOs. Like they use different words and code words to say it, but, and, and they were just unidentified objects. So they could have been, you know, could have been experimental aircraft that was being created or, mm-hmm. or whatever else. But JFK went to three different Naval bases and it was like project blue book 
was the Air Force yeah. was the Air Force's mm-hmm. um, code for for the UFOs that they had, but they had nothing compared to what Majestic Twelve is. So if you ever have time, look into Majestic Twelve. It's I wonder crazy. if they're, they're basically like are they the Men in Black? Yeah, pretty close, pretty close. So they run Roswell and uh, our there's, Area Fifty One, and then there's another one. There's White. still a thing. Like the majestic That's twelve the thing, is still dude, is like we don't know. Oh, it these secret groups, they could have. I mean, you look at stuff like the Freemasons. Like they're they're not necessarily a secret group, but they've been around for centuries. Yeah, but this is a branch of the government of of the oh, CIA. But th- how easy could it be for a secret group to take that power? Right. So the thing, so easy. So the thing with Russian ties to Oswald killing JFK is BS too, because JFK was reaching out to who was the leader of, I forgot his name. Of, no, of oh, Russia. That's the, that's the last forty right. years, not fifty. Of Russia. Yeah. <laughs> of Russia. He was reaching out, saying that we needed. He was trying to. Was it Gorbachev? No. No, I'm sorry. That's K. It starts with a K. Will you look it up, please? Yes, I will. Thank you. But he was he was reaching out saying that we need he was trying to find common ground because it was the start the of, war of was the Cold War. Going. Yeah, it was Cold War was going. So Bay of Pigs, all that. Right. Well, so we so at the time we were in the middle of the Cold War and the Vietnam War. Right. So he Man, we, I feel like we just went right off a cliff. It is, dude. dude. It's all. But that's the it's thing. All it's tied all in. tied together. Like, I didn't believe it until I started reading the documentation and it all ties together. It's crazy. I'm not saying I believe it. I'm just but saying. I do. I mean, I'm not saying I'm just saying. I'm, but I'm Chris, not. Khrushchev. Khrushchev. That's who it is. Reached out because he wanted Nikita. to. Nikita. Because he made the promise. That's a girl's name. <laughs> He made the promise that we were going to go to the moon, right? Uh huh. So he reached out to Khrushchev and said, "Let's bring our what all of our technology that we have together so that we can complete this." And he goes, "I know we have our differences, but let's for the common good of of mankind and the world, let's come together." Well, that's when the CIA pulled off the Bay of Pigs. Which mm-hmm. have you heard of the Bay of Pigs? No. It's where they trained the. Never heard of the Bay of Pigs. They trained Never. the operatives Never. to attack Cuba to uh-huh. try to overthrow Castro. Right? Castro. It was it was one of the many attempts to assassinate Castro. Led which by they the tried CIA. to assassinate him multiple times and failed right. every single time. And it was led by the CIA, which Russia was backing Castro. So that kind of threw off him trusting JFK and coming together. He ended up saying he would later. And then there's documentation saying that we were share our UFO technologies with each other. Because that, uh, that's when titanium was made or figured out, which they said it was a... Anyways, I could go so on. So basically, so real quick, just to kind of to summarize and bring things all together, the, the, the biggest theories as to why JFK was murdered conspiratorially is one of them is uh, Lyndon B. Johnson did it. He wanted to right. be president, so it was for okay. political gain. So he organized it, had him killed for that. He was a puppet. And for uh, for other reasons that he just didn't like him. Um, kind of what Chris just touched on, the military-industrial complex, they talk in, in some articles I've read more so about the fact that because we were in the Cold War and the war in Vietnam, that drives a lot of, like, war economy is always great. Like, mm. it drives a lot of money into these big corporations. And... JFK was wanting to pull people out of Vietnam. He was wanting to put an end to it, which would then cost these industrial business, like these corporations, massive amounts of money. Therefore, they wanted to take him out so that they could, you know. Not to mention in the military industrial complex, they started having these secret groups doing top secret experiments trying to create more powerful weapons right Mm -hmm. and that's when the cia and all that under it was lyndon b johnson right Mm -hmm. that's when they were created and they don't have to answer to the to our elected officials which means that they're a shadow government right which is not good which is not good lyndon b johnson is also again the one who who started the warren um (laughs) the investigative team that looked into jfk's death oh really yeah so he's the one who put it together. And they're the ones who came up with the conclusion. He did it by himself. Huh. No, he didn't. No, what um, I, that's not what I'm talking about. Who's the, who's the president before Eisenhower? He's the one who started the CIA. 
Who was that? Uh, uh, did I say it was? No, it was. Uh, wasn't Truman? It was no Truman? Was it Truman? Was it? it was Truman? Because you said it was in the four. Harry S. Truman. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, he he started the CIA, and that's it. Eisenhower got a hold of all this, and he's like, "This isn't good. Like, there's all these that don't have to answer to people who are elected. That's dangerous to our democracy, right?" Dangerous to our democracy. Dangerous. Dangerous. CIA is not to supposed to democracy. operate on American soil. <laughs> right. Like that happened. But I mean, you don't hear about the battle over Los Angeles. You don't really hear much about mm-hmm. the Bay of Pigs. They're trying to just. I remember the Bay of Pigs being taught in school, though. Yeah, briefly. Yeah. Very briefly. Um, when they should have been taught, talking about money management. Yeah, right. <laughs> the other big theory is the mob. So right. we kind of talked about that. The mob did it because of, you know, they're cracking down on crime. His brother was the AG, all that stuff. Right. Um, then there's also the CIA. So with the Bay of Pigs and all these other things, the CIA was pissed off at JFK and this was, was their test- way of getting back at him. He was testing their authority. And he was, he was trying he was to, trying to cut them. Yeah. He was trying to cut them down quite a bit. No, he's um, trying to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. He's trying to abolish them. And so, so, Ultimately, too, there's a guy named L. Fletcher Prouty, who also goes by the name of Mr. X. And he is um, a guy who um, um, talked to, uh, oh, what's his name? The guy I've been mentioning. The um, uh, one who killed Jack Oswald? Ruby? No. The, uh, God, what is his name? I have it right. Uh, Jim Garrison. Okay. The guy oh, who yeah. investigated everything and stuff like that. Right. So... Jeff Garrison claims that he went and talked to this guy. He's a high-level figure in Washington, D.C., goes by the name of Mr. X. Mm. He claims that there was a, I don't know how you say the word, but it's a coup, coup d'etat. A coup de gras? A, no, coup no. d'etat or something like that. Coup d'etat? Coup d'etat, there you go. A Which coup. is a basically a dismantle of government. Mm. And he says... Well, yeah, a, so a coup is basically where... That's kind of what they say Lyndon B. Johnson was doing is you're yeah. overthrowing the leader and replacing all and them with a new government. And that's what he says. He said at the highest level of the government, implementing members of the CIA, the mafia, the military industrial complex, Secret Service, FBI and Lyndon B. Johnson. Um, he suggests that he was killed because he wanted to pull the United States from Vietnam War. Right. Like you had mentioned. And um Basically, and then dismantle the CIA after that as well. So he believes this guy, like he, I think he's actually come forward a little bit later, but I'm not sure. But he claims that they're like, he heard all these rumors. He knows all this stuff. He actually, you know, all this stuff. And at the time he just went by Mr. X because he knew if his name got out there, he would be found himself suicided. Essentially, he just, <laughs> yeah. Uh, JFK just pissed off all the wrong people. He ruffled yep. too many feathers. And they kind of joined forces against him. Kind of the the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of yep. thing. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I mean, I, I, I don't believe that Harvey Oswald did it just because he's a crazy person. No. Like, there's just too well, much. And there's another, there's a teacher um, in here who tired, Gene Hill. So she is uh, the the infamous lady in red um, in the uh, in the Zapruder films. So she basically mm-hmm. because she is seen in there wearing a long red trench coat. She claims that she saw someone running from the hill. You had mentioned it earlier the grassy knoll. Yeah, running mm-hmm. sub- from the book depository towards the grassy knoll over by the to the railroad tracks because behind the behind the grassy knoll was railroad tracks. Mm-hmm. She was later. I think this is who you're talking about earlier. She was later put in there and in front of a lineup. And she actually claimed that it was Jack Ruby who she saw running. Um, This also led to other interviews. There was a um, railroad track manager guy who was over there kind of paying attention. He was managing all the tracks and stuff. And he says, he claims that he saw three or four different people go up behind the wooden fence by the grassy knoll, Mm -hmm. started looking. He thought they were FBI, you know, secret service agents and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden shooting happened and all of a sudden they just kind of slowly packed things up and got in their cars and drove away. So he helped with Gene Hill's thing, but all of it still, Gene Hill claims that the F or the CIA or whoever interrogated her, um, the secret service, they actually forced her to recant her thing and come up with a whole different Mm. thing. So that's another Basically witness that he saw. Basically bullied Jack her. Ruby. 
Yeah, really? that was another witness that saw Jack Ruby. And she other was, one wasn't. She was leaving out of town. Yeah, she so. was basically bullied, I guess, into rechanging her position. And so that's crazy. Uh, JFK also had a closed casket. Yes. For obvious reasons. But also, it's uh, an easy way to cover up anything, too. Yeah. Like once he's sealed in the casket, no one can open it. You can't look at the body again. I'm sure they didn't do an autopsy. Mm -hmm. Basically, there were a lot of powerful people in in cahoots with all this. Well, they did. One of the doctors did cut open the neck to see, and he said it was an entrance wound in the front of the neck. And then they, and that. then he got like pushed out. Yeah, that was that was the other thing. Yeah, they um, they had when they went and did the autopsy. Um, the uh, Secret Service or the FBI or whoever actually had one of their own guys come in and perform the autopsy. Right. There was another doctor there who started it and was, I think he was, yeah, he was the one who was like looking at things and claiming this and he was pushed out of the way and the FBI had their own guy come in and perform the autopsy from there. Well, they tried stating that his part of his head wasn't missing is what they tried to claim. And yeah. he's like, I was looking right down at it. He goes... He goes, the skull piece that was moving was in excess of three inches, at least. Well, and that's and even then, um, uh, his wife. Like She was like, how do I have... His brains were literally on my dress. Which there, well, there's went. that famous picture of her on... I think they're on Air Force One when they're swearing in LBJ. Mm -hmm. And she's still covered in blood. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Like it happened... It, everything had to happen so quickly. Like... Yeah. But she was in the right, hospital she, holding his brains. Like she's like, I've got his brains. But from where she was sitting, if the Lee Harvey Oswald story was fact, she wouldn't have been had his blood on it on her. No, he, she would have. But his brain Not matter much, went though. to the back uh, of the car, mm -hmm. which if because she she was to the left of him, right? And okay. so so yeah, so if he was shot in the back of the head, oh yeah yeah. It would have sprayed most of it onto the governor. Yeah, the governor Correct. and the guy okay. driving. But because he was sh shot from the grassy knoll, a lot of that would have sprayed her direction. Right. So on the governor, if the shot came from the front, how did the bullet do everything it did to the governor? So Lee Harvey Oswald did shoot. He did shoot at them. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. He was in on it. It's just that, yeah, they, they don't believe... He just didn't actually make the was, kill shot. It's like he said, they, they basically made it an ambush to make sure they got the job done. Right. And so he was there to be the fall guy. The other people were there to make sure it, mm -hmm. it finished. Ah, okay. Yeah. Because the governor was sitting... The governor got hit in the back, though, too. Well, he got hit in the well, yeah, throat, he too, by hit. one, didn't he? He got hit. Supposedly, he got hit by one bullet. Through the back, out the chest, through his... Hmm. hand in his leg yeah and so the governor was and directly even, in front of jfk right yeah yeah who was it i think it was the governor he said like in his own testimony he's like there's no way that it was one person right i can't remember exactly what he said i i remember reading it but yeah he was like he said him and his wife 100 percent believe that there had to be multiple shooters so it, how many shots do they think the governor was hit by if it wasn't a magic bullet. At least two. Yeah. And how would that be? Because, be? I mean, because it could go, you could see it going through the chest and hitting his arm. Right. Because it's the right side of his body is but then the, the leg. chest, but then it's his left leg. But yeah, then yeah. That, that's what confuses it all, because basically it would have to go in and take an immediate uh, right turn or whatever and then go right into his leg. Mm. Well, and the so, wrist, yeah, it's, and then it's shot down. Yeah, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. It was wild. I mean, there is some debate because of the fact that JFK was sitting up on a higher seat. It could potentially line up depending on how they were turned and stuff. But they're also, I, I saw someone, you made a comment in the video, like he's still using his hand or something after the second shot. All right. Like his, his wrist is fine. So the second shot is supposedly the magic bullet that went through them both. But his wrist, he was like holding something and his wrist was okay after the second shot. Well, you're saying the first shot supposedly missed, right? Yeah. But in the video, there... he's going past a sign. And as soon as he gets past the sign, he's putting his hands. He's holding his neck because he, yeah, he got hit from that first shot in his neck. JFK did. 
Well, yeah, but that they call that the second shot. That's but, the magic bullet. Right. But it couldn't be the second shot. It was the. It was after the first pop, though. Uh huh. Yeah. You know who they need on the case is Dexter. <laughs> I was thinking that just the same, right. dude. Man, he'd be able blood to look at that blood spatter analysis. Yeah, I was think I was actually thinking about that too. I was like, "What's the blood spatter analysis on this?" I want to know. But I mean, at the end of the day, I I'm not I'm I'm I am saying I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm saying I'm saying that this was a conspiracy right. of the highest degree. <laughs> It was. They were out for this man. It was. And after watching this JFK one, because Oliver Stone, he's the director of it, he he put a lot into this movie. And I firmly believe that, I don't know who was involved, but I do believe that there was a second or possibly third shooter. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I, I do think that Harvey Oswald was involved in mm. some way, shape or form. Um, cause there is some claims out there. Some witnesses said that they saw Harvey Oswald in the break room the whole time that no one ever saw him up see, in the thing. But then but 45 know... minutes after is when he shot the policeman with his, with his revolver. <laughs> exactly. And then was apprehended in the theater. Yes. So if you're sitting in the break room and your alibi is tight, why are you shooting a cop? Exactly. And that's <laughs> why. Yeah. And so, and that's, you know, so I, I ultimately believe that he was there. Yeah. And he was one of the gunsmen to fire up there. But I believe that there was a second or third one. Right. And I don't necessarily believe it's because of aliens either. But it was pretty compelling when you look <laughs> at all the evidence. Because they did have supposed of UFO or experimental aircraft that were being formed. That the he was aliens trying. have ties with the mafia. And the CIA. Nah. And the CIA. I don't know. I, I wouldn't put it past the CIA to do something like this. But I think it. Because I do that weird tie high. with MK Ultra. Right. Makes me what really wonder. What if the aliens wonder. are the CIA? <laughs> I mean, the saying, men in black I'm have saying. aliens working for them. You're True. Just exploded it's my worms. brain. Dude, it's wild. Well, what do you What do it's, you guys think after our, our presented evidence? I mean, it sounds pretty compelling. All right. I think uh, I think we got a ringer here. Yeah. I, ding ding ding. I definitely I don't yeah. believe the the true in quotations story. The I think something more. out of the different conspiracies, I would I would definitely say the CIA is involved somehow or another. I'm I'm very intrigued to go watch the all the footage and and I, I got. Oh, we're gonna this right now. after this. I'm deep diving, man. See, and right. that's I could I can firmly believe that the CIA and maybe even the Secret Service was involved. I, think I so. don't think Lyndon B. Johnson was involved. Yeah, I um, I don't think. You know, that that maybe other people of the government were involved and stuff, but I could see it being, you know, like like you were saying, a, a, a coup basically to to kind of dismantle JFK. Because, I mean, he was ruffling feathers. Right. The thing he that was breaks doing my, it in a bad way. But the thing that breaks my heart with him is uh, um, and this is just kind of going off what my mom said, because she was around at that time is JFK was kind of destined to do some great things. That's what and I heard. I, I kind of talked to my I, dad about it as well, but he also, my dad was also saying that JFK was also very much um, liberal, liberal in the sense. At that time, he was, he was considered left. Yeah, like they, and that he, he was, was... progressive and, and liberal. The things that he was also like trying to do... then isn't what it no. is now. Oh, it's not, no. no, nowadays he would be on the right. Yeah, but I, you know, my dad also, I think if I remember right, he mentioned that he was also doing some things that could have hurt the United States as well. Yeah, that's, I've also heard that same yeah. thing. The other thing is, well, who knows if we've, rom they've romanticized him because of true, his assassination. True. Like yeah. if he weren't killed, would we still be talking good about it? Well, it's funny. It's actually really intriguing. Um, this is another book I would highly suggest going to read. It's uh, called 112263 by Stephen King. And the plot of it is there is a, it's a, it's a show on Hulu. Yeah. yeah. With, uh, with, uh, what's his face? James Franco. James Franco yeah. yeah. So the, the plot of it is basically there's this, uh, time warp bubble, um, in this place that he finds, you know, that one of these guys finds and it takes you back to like 1958. So he goes back in time to basically investigate the assassination of JFK and to stop it. Mm. And then he successfully does stop it. And then what it does to the world after that is basically just creates this whole time shift of the world being destroyed. Um, by the mm. time it comes up to like 2011, when the book was created, 
Um, it ends up being that we're now in like a communist era where everything is controlled by the government and you cannot do a single (laughs) thing and like the energy like a lot of the electricity and stuff is very much controlled or if not existent at all so very much 1984 like yes and so stephen king's outlook on it he's like it's all pure you know it's all made up he's like but he's like it's very interesting to think what would happen if jfk was saved and where we would be right now and he's yeah. like devil's advocate of it. Like, who knows what was going on behind the scenes? Who knows what kind of person he was not in front of cameras, not out in public? Mm-hmm. Like, think, I mean, this is not to say he is like Hitler, <laughs> but saying if you had a person like Hitler behind the scenes, but not out in front, wouldn't you think that a bunch of people would work together to try to, to take, overthrow that to get rid of that right. so yeah. maybe they're called, especially coming out of a world war they're mm-hmm. the avengers of their time the mystic 12 the mystic 12 <laughs> or the majestic. majestic majestic 12 but even better majestic so, so like they have long hair reminds me of like the, the same magnificent 1980s <laughs> rock band hair people are scared because he was trying to make peace with russia he was trying to do it diplomatically mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, so they thought he was a communist sympathizer. I mean, I can think of another president who, you know, tried to to qualm some tensions between, I don't know, us and some other communist countries who got a lot of flack for it. Was he huge? He was huge. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I can remember, one of the only sitting presidents to ever sit down with the, the little dick tater of, uh, <laughs> of Northern Korea and get him to chill out a bit. <laughs> And everyone gave him crap for that, but uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's very interesting, but it's wild. It I, just the thing that always scares me is I one hundred percent believe that there are organizations with very powerful, very rich people who work in the dark and control a lot of the things that go on that we think we might have choice over. Well, and what I'm very intrigued about too, is this Jim Garrison guy because of his investigations and because, cause he actually took, he was the only guy to ever take anybody to trial over the shootings. And his name was, who did he take his, to trial? His name was Jim Shaw. He was a guy out of, I think it was Jim Shaw. Anyways, he was a guy out of new Orleans who he 100% <laughs> believed because he was also had, credible witnesses who saw him in Dallas as well. So he was believed. And then there was also another guy, a jailhouse snitch that basically talked about, you know, being there and all this stuff about hearing all the stuff about the JFK assassination. But anyways, he took this guy to trial over the whole thing. And ultimately this Jim Shaw was acquitted and nothing ever happened to it because just circumstantial evidence just wasn't there. Um, but this also caused, um, judges to release, um, what was it? The Warren, what's it called? The, the people over the JFK Warren commission. Yeah. The Warren mm-hmm. commission. So he got some of the stuff released back in like, what, mid nineties or something like that. Mm-hmm. There were some papers and stuff released, but all of their findings and all of everything that leads up to the JFK assassination is set to be released in the year 2029. 2038. Is awesome. it 2038? Did they push? I didn't see either of that. I, I'm pretty sure. That's what I just, I was listening. And that's okay. What they said. So basically, yeah. One of so the, it's, it keeps getting, it was pushed. Yeah. So Jeez. basically there is a lot, a lot of evidence and papers and documentation. And with all of these witnesses that have been forced together, that they're all going to be released at a certain date. They're and going to they're be released at a time when it no longer matters. Pretty much. <laughs> when everybody involved is pretty much dead. And yeah. who knows? Maybe one point or another we'll find out who actually did. I mean, there JFK. are some documents. Right. Yeah, there is some right that now. has been released, but not the entirety. It's like it's like a, like a little, like maybe like 10, 15% of the documents have been released, and that's it. Really? Mm-hmm. If there was just curious, if there was multiple shooters and they were all shooting fairly close together, would they even know who killed JFK? Like whose bullet actually made the contact? Now, when I go duck hunting, I know if I shot that duck. 
well, for real. Like, no, with yeah, multiple I mean, people shooting at the same oh, duck. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you you can there's, you can tell by the there's way a it timing hits. to it. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, okay. there's a timing. So it's a the boom. sound. The but I guess the investigation hit, wise, would you even be able to pinpoint? It'd who be a did lot it? harder, especially back then. Nowadays, uh, I did actually watch a video of these these two guys who claimed to have proven the uh, the magic bullet theory. Hmm. Um, using today's like laser and uh, 3D mapping Ballistic and stuff gel like that. and everything too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh. So they. they I mean, I've to... heard bullets do ricochet in the body off oh, yeah. of bone. Yeah, like, pretty, yeah. They. Uh, it's not really a ricochet. They fragment. Oh. They yeah, fragment, but... or they. I mean, if, so I the guess if they the... hit it at, an, at a certain angle, they could. It could redirect it. So right. the thing that makes the magic bullet ridiculous is the. The fact that that bullet they said bullet. magic. Well, the, <laughs> well, the but bullet I mean, found on the stretcher was completely completely intact. intact. So right. using the ricochet theory, it and you saying it's more fragments. That it's bullet piece, would have been. It's a piece of just, lead. Lead right. is lead's not the hardest. It's material. malleable. Right. It's pretty soft. Yeah, yeah. So, so it would have been mushroomed at least. Yeah, or Something. fragmented. Or had blood on it. Because what they do is they put they put a copper jacket around the leg. Yeah. And that would have been... Anyways. Yeah. It would have been compromised, for sure. But it's Crazy. still no blood? <laughs> like, I'm just saying, I've never went shot... Went through two people and no blood? I've never shot a deer and had the bullet come out looking the exact same way it came out of the gun looking. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. It's still in the shell. This <laughs> is the bullet. The shot. <laughs> right. uh, what? <laughs> 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 oh man! Anyway. But yeah, there you have it, guys. That is the the great debate about JFK and his assassination. Yep. Just too many, too many there's, weird things. There's so much, and there's so many more. There's so much more too. Yep. There's so much more to this. Like multiple shooters, the Umbrella Man. I get frazzled angles. because I could have went forever. Uh, maybe this we'll could do easily, that another time. Say, this, this could easily be like a five-hour discussion. If we get enough thumbs up, let us know by thumbsing up if you guys want to see a part two where we dive even deeper. Yeah. Find more. Let's say ricochet. <laughs> yeah. 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 Magic Put word it in the, the comments. Day. Ricochet. Ricochet. <laughs> Google how to spell it. (laughs) Love love your families. Keep them close and stay away from dark, shadowy organizations. Correct. (sighs) Don't piss off the mob. (laughs) Right? Never piss off the mob. Never piss off the mob. Don't piss off the government more than the mob. That too. I feel like the mob is kind of just What if the mob works for the government? What if the government is the mob? Last last fun fact, JFK's dad was a moonshine or a bootlegger. Son of a gun. Did you know that? I saw a little fun fact that Woody Harrelson, the actor, that his dad was supposedly one of the suspects of JFK's assassination. Yes. I didn't know that. Weird. Yeah, his dad was actually an assassin. Yeah. Like, an assassin for hire. He yeah. actually did get oh my convicted. Gosh, dude, that's mm. not of the JFK. Yeah, not JFK, but you got convicted of like an assassination and went to jail. You know, Woody Harrelson's dad. Yeah. Sorry, I meant to bring this up way earlier in this podcast, but this had so many weird parallels to the shooting that happened down in Vegas. Oh, the one at the concert. Yeah. Have you have you looked into that one? A little About bit that enough. Angle. Enough to question Because again, yeah. the person that they they claimed did it was like almost a perfect. What was the word? Oh, you yeah. guys Patsy. 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 It's a perfect Patsy. Patsy. I mean, you're not crazy. you're not gonna blame you're not gonna blame the the guy that works a nine to five and has a family and kids and and yeah. you know pays tithing to their church or whatever. I'm safe. You're gonna find the dude that's a little extreme. Has a record. Or, uh-huh. Yeah. You gotta, it's it's once so much again, easier to swallow that pill. So I know we've talked about it on other conspiracies, how they put it in movies to make you think like, oh, it, you know, it's not real because it's just what you right. see in the movies, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. So just thinking of, once again, Jack Reacher, mm-hmm. like Jack Reacher, it was perfect. They wanted to kill the one person. And so instead they kill a few just to make it look like it's just a mass thing. And then they blame the ex veteran with PTSD who actually did have some issues when he was still in it. But uh, as soon as they start investigating it, sim- similar to the Grassy Knoll situation, as soon as they start investigating it, uh, they're looking at the spot where supposedly he shot from, but they were saying, no, if he would have 
he's a smart sniper. He was trained well. If he would have shot from here, he would have known that the sun would have been in his eyes and it was a bad angle. He would have shot from the bridge. He would have shot from his van where his... Uh, his brass could have been collected. His and brass cleaned. could have been collected. Yeah, And the sun's at his back. And, and, and then not to mention the line would have been better. Like it was almost exactly how you just described the JFK mm -hmm. thing. And so it's mm -hmm. just interesting. Granted, Jack Reacher was made way after this, but it's just one of those things that it's, I wonder if you go back and watch Jack Reacher, if you pick up on more parallels, right? But there, there is this, I think I've mentioned it before and I got to find it again. There was this YouTube video I watched from a, uh, he used to be a stunt double in a lot of big movies. Like he worked in Hollywood for years and years and years. Oh, very deep into it and saw and was part of all this thing. Well, recently this again, actually this was like years ago that I saw this video. He was trying to kind of expose a lot of those things going on in Hollywood mm -hmm. um, because he kind of turned to the Lord and was feeling repentant and hated everything that they were and stood for. And one of the things, the biggest things I remember is just like you said, and we've talked about before, what better way to, to make us sound crazy than to put it in a movie. Uh -huh. And then so when you say, oh, yeah, th that's this happened. They're like, oh, that sounds like a movie you saw. You know, you desensitize us to it. But also the fact in this video, he, there is a retired CIA guy and he claimed that the CIA is the one who actually came up with the word conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. The phrase, <laughs> the CIA came up with that phrase to destroy people who are coming up with these actual true theories and make them sound crazy. Dirty buggers. See, it's funny you mentioned the whole movie thing because I was called on that on our last podcast, something like that. I I, I had explained something or whatever, and somebody actually mentioned that they're like, "Oh, that thing that Zach explained that happened on this TV show or this movie," and it's like, great. To one hundred, they take stuff from real life. So exactly, they, they <laughs> take it from real life. They desensitize us to it. It's so easy to hide yep. right in plain sight. One of those things where it was just like a, you just described a TV show. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. I described real life. No, what you movie? described a TV show. Oh, like for example, perfect example, Minority Report. Mm -hmm. Okay, spoilers. If you haven't seen it, I mean, it's been like twenty years. <laughs> oh, um, that hurts. Have you not seen it? No, I have No, it has been like twenty years. Yeah, oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah, see this. Um, <laughs> oh, so that movie. Remember how she sees the vision of the person getting murdered, and they pin, you know, they they pin it on whoever, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then they come to find out that actually exactly it was a it was a reenactment of the actual murder. Oh, yeah. Remember, yeah. so they they did it, and then they like they acted it out kind of thing, and then they actually did it mm -hmm. the way it was seen. Uh -huh. So now you're like, oh no, that's that's exactly what happened. Like you disregard it's so easy. it exactly. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating. It makes me mad because I see stuff. I've been watching X Files. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's like a spot on, dude. They're just freaking play, play for play. Everything the CIA is doing. And we lost him. No, nope, I'm just saying. <laughs> By the that way, thing was written by the people doing the stuff. Minority Report is a month shy from its 20th anniversary. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh. Dang, yeah. dude, I nailed that. Yeah. 2002. Jeez. I don't That's know great. what's worse is oh, thinking that uh, right. <laughs> thinking that Minority Report's 20 years old or that 2002 is 20 years ago. I feel like 2002 is 10 years ago. Well, the <laughs> 90s still feels like it was 10 years ago. <laughs> right. 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 That's, That's so a, weird. Totally, Does it really, have you though? Had, have totally. Any of you, really? Have hey. any of you had your kids call you out for being born in the 1900s yet? No. no. Kaylee did it to me the other day. <laughs> <laughs> and, dude, it hit hard. She's like, you were born in the 1900s. So, I was Jenny, like, oh, I was. <laughs> Don't Jenny and say I, uh, that. Yeah. Jenny and I went to this uh, pizza place. And on their sign, it was like, established 1993. And I was like, well, good for you. And then I was like, I guess that's 30 years. Son <laughs> yeah, of a... Jeez <laughs> 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 Well, that's that's all for today, folks. <laughs> Let us know where you stand on the on the JFK assassination. Do you believe Harvey Oswald acted alone, or do you think there's some bigger conspiracy here? UFOs. Groups of people. 
Let us know below. And if you want to hear any other conspiracy theories, heck, maybe if there's some you want us to look into, leave it below. We'll research it. We'll talk about it. It's fun. I love these. I love conspiracy theories. Yeah. I love They're blowing fun. my mind. It's, it's a good time. <laughs> I did it again. Shh. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, whatever. Well, hope Thanks you guys have a good crowd. night. <laughs> Goodbye. Ciao. See ya. Love you. <laughs>